This video demonstration is brought to you by the Craft Channel in association with Tulip. For more information, visit www.tulip3d.com. Hi, my name's Kate Hemmings, and I'm pleased to welcome you to a very special project video demonstration brought to you by the Craft Channel in association with Tulip. Today I'm joined by Corinne Brad, who's going to show us how to decorate some willies. Hi, Corinne. Hello, Kate. Well, that sounds very intriguing. It is. I'll tell you what, these are great fun. Um, now, these are just plain children's wellies that you can pick up in most um, supermarkets. And we've used a variety of paints here by Tulip. Now, they're all three-dimensional paints, but there's several different types. Um, you've got the slick, which is like a plain, glossy colour. You've got metallic here, which is a lovely sort of pearlized sheen to it. We've got glitter paints, and we've also got glow-in-the-dark. My favourite. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the glow-in-the-dark is brilliant. Now, you, you can't see it here because the studio lights are too bright, but this whole welly has got glow-in-the-dark paint on it as well. Um, we've got a photograph that we took of it for you, which we'll show you now. And how good is that? Amazing. I really want a pair because my feet are small, but they're not that small. Oh, so you're going to have to do it all over again. <laughs> but it's very simple to use. I'm just going to, if you can pass me my, my blank welly. Um, <laughs> what you'll notice, I've only decorated the outside of the welly. Now, the paint is very, very durable. I mean, you can't really pick it off once it's on there. But children rub their feet together. There's little point decorating the inside of the welly because it will get scuffed and it will get rubbed. So really, just do the outsides of them. Um, I've stuffed this with some bubble wrap to make sure I've got a nice surface to work on. Okay. Um, and really the simplest way to do it, let's do the octopus. If you get a white pen, just sketch out your basic shape on here with a white pen, making sure you've got the right number of tentacles, because otherwise your child will never forgive you. <laughs> okay. Um, now let's think, what colours have we used? Let's use some green. No, that's the glitter. Got too much green choice. and orange. I have got too much choice. <laughs> Green and orange, here we go. Um, now I tend to store my paints upside down. Um, the hanging lids that you get, and when you buy the individual ones are perfect because they will allow you to sit them like that. Mm. And what it means is that you, if you've got any air bubbles in them, they raise to the top, so you always get a continuous line of paint. Um, the other thing is if you just give them a quick flick of the wrist like that, it makes sure that the paint's right down near the nib. Um, and I always just double check on a piece, of uh, a piece of tissue just to get that first flow of paint out. Okay. Okay. So, if you draw your outline... Straight on. Straight onto the boot. Look how easy that is. I think even I could manage that. It's very, very smooth paint. Goes on okay. really nicely. Goes on very nicely. Um, now, I'm filling him in. I'm not going to um, push too much more paint on there, but I'm just using the nib of the paint tube just to spread the paint out a bit. Yeah? Okay. So, it will fill all of that in. So you're not actually applying a lot more? No, then. I'm squeezing a little bit out, okay. bit by bit, because you, you know you want to make sure you've got a nice thick coverage. Um, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, you put wet on wet. So, so while you don't leave that to dry? No, while oh. that's still wet, you can get a different colour and you can put some spots around the top of his head. Is this glow in the dark? No, this is just fluorescent yellow. I like it anyway, it's yeah. bright. Um, let's give him a pair of eyes. Yeah, he'll need those. Again, each time just squeeze it out to make sure you've got a nice bubble-free line. There's his eyes. <laughs> oh. Every now and again you want to replace your piece of tissue because <laughs> it will get covered in paint. Um, the other thing, the other quite handy tip as well, is to make sure that you've got some um, cotton buds because if you do make a mistake while it's still wet it's much easier just to wipe it away with a cotton bud and leave it nice and clean and it, to be honest because the paint is so durable it's very difficult to get it off once it's dry okay um, but you don't want to scrub <coughs> it with a cloth because you then risk smudging the rest of your design um, so we'll get the glow in the dark and as I say with this you can't see the results sadly under this light oh look I've got paint everywhere now but if we just apply dots here while it's wet you can see where it still is and it looks like the fluorescent yellow but it dries very very palely okay so to carry on with his legs oh again just run a line along where you're going so how long would you leave this to dry Corin? um you need to leave it to dry realistically for about two to three hours. You can speed up the drying process by putting it on a radiator or in the sunshine. 
Um, and what I'd advise is that you leave it overnight before you actually wear them. Um, but the good thing is, is, you know, because you can apply it while it's still wet and because it's quite a thick paint, it won't run into each other. So you mm. can do this quite quickly. I mean, the way I did the well is, was I did the main parts of it first, like the octopus and the fish. And then I put things like the seaweed and the coral on. And then I put the seabed on afterwards. And each time, you know, it meant it was dry as I worked on it. Yeah, it's not running or dripping at all, no. is it? And then, again, with each of them, take some glow in the dark and just apply it onto here. The other thing is, when it, because it is three-dimensional, you've got a lovely tactile it's, surface it's on it really as well. It's got a really good texture, isn't it? Um, but this paint, it would take longer to dry on something like rubber or plastic because okay. it's, it's got nothing to suck into. Um, but I mean, this paint can be used on all manner of surfaces. It can be used on fabrics, ceramics, you know, card making, stuff like this. Again, it's a multi-purpose paint. Um, I'll show you how easy it is on some other things. Okay. Um, just a quickie, I was going to show you another technique. If you've got something like coral down the bottom of the seabed, if you just put a few dots of paint, like this, okay. and get a knitting needle or something, a knitting, a knitting needle, needle. Okay. and then you can just run the stems of your coral down. What a top tip, I'd never have thought of using a knitting needle. Oh, that's what I mean about the air bubbles. I didn't shake that one, <laughs> but on something like the coral, you know, you can, you can just repair any mistakes simply with that knitting needle. If you were doing a straight line, and you've got an air bubble in it, you would be advised really to try and clean it up with a cotton okay. bud. But, but I mean, in something like a freehand drawing like this, who, knew, that, who knew there was you a mistake? Didn't see that. Um, so I haven't got time to do the whole boot, I'm afraid. So you won't be going home with these tonight. Oh, that's a shame. But there are, you know, they're, they're very easy to use. Children would love to do a project with this. You know, you buy them a pair of wellies and a, and a starter kit. Yeah, um, we've got a starter kit over here, actually. Which, as you can see, is only nine ninety nine. It's got a fantastic range of colours in there, um, and you can actually use these paints on a number of different surfaces. Oh yeah, can't yeah, you, you can do. I mean, you take ceramics for example; they work really well on ceramics. Um, you can't dishwash them; um, you'd need to hand wash them. But they're non toxic paints, so really, I mean, if you just had a decorative effect around the edge of a bowl, I mean, something quite simple like um, like we were doing the coral before, but you could have a range of little flowers, just five dots. A quick knitting needle there, and then oh, let's have that in the centre because that's quite a nice colour. That's, that's a lovely colour. It is a beautiful colour. And just in the middle. Just in the middle. Just like that. So I've you know you could decorate the whole of an edge of bowl. You, you've got sort of cake stands and things like that. They'd be really really good. But you'd have to wash them sort of in coolish water or just give them a wipe over with a damp cloth. Okay, I've but also got a nice canvas bag yeah, here. They you decorate work, something like yeah, this? Yeah, they work really well on fabrics as well. I mean, and again, it, because the paints are so, um, got such a smooth consistency, you can just, you would probably need to put something inside it just to make sure they don't bleed through. Put a piece of tissue in there for a minute. And you probably need to iron it first as well to make sure it's right. <laughs> but I mean, you, you, can you can literally just freehand write something on here. Just like that? Just like that. Let's do all your favourite colours. And my favourite letters. <laughs> it just looks so easy to apply, it, just doing it freehand It like takes that, a bit of practice. Smooth. I mean, in all, you know, when you're first starting to do it, Again, just buy some sort of cheap cotton or some cheap um, tea towels or something like that to work on first of all. And have a bit of a practice. And have a bit of a practice because, you know, it's like any, any new craft that you do, you are going to make mistakes to start with. But, I mean, this paint is so simple. I mean, this is why it's ideal for kids because it, it just, you know, you can't, I'm not saying you can't go wrong with it, but it's, it's very difficult to make a mistake. And if you do make a mistake, you know, nine times out of ten, you can rectify it with a cotton bud or something like that. Um, if you're working on fabric, you obviously can't wipe it off as quickly because it will soak into the fabric. Yeah. Um, but there you go. But, you know, it's, it's very easy to do. You, you know, you can have a black tote bag, decorate it with glow in the dark. Yes, I'd like one of those as yeah. well, please. <laughs> Thanks All right, very then. much, Corey, and that's been great. That's all we've got time for here today, but for more information and project ideas, go to www.tulip3d.com. See you next time.